Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our online Mass. Today, we are celebrating the solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. Our main celebrant this afternoon is Pro Father Yosuke Sakai. Let us all stand and sing the entrance song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In our lives, we may have belittled the presence of the Lord in the Eucharist. Sometimes we neglect God's commandments or forget to fulfill our Christian's duty. Now we begin by asking forgiveness to the Lord. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Glory to God in the highest. the Lord Jesus to be always our food of life. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, 
Grant us, we pray, to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now, the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger, and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm for our response. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed this word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, so many, are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand for the gospel acclamation. down from heaven says the Lord whoever eats this bread will live forever
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my fl blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ. In the time of the outbreak of COVID-19, you have refrained from participating in the Eucharist at the church and haven't received communion for quite some time. I hear from many of you of your profound craving for the body of Christ and for the community of believers, friends in the Lord. You are offering up your pain as a sacrifice for such significant causes as the end of pandemic, the essential workers, the repose of souls, the recovery of patients, and more. I really appreciate your hidden heroic acts and sacrifices as we celebrate this remarkable feast day, it is very timely and meaningful to reflect on how we deal with the body of Christ in our devotional life as Catholics. Elsewhere, I heard one of the elders of the First Nations in North America saying regarding their relationship with Mother Nature Quote, Mother Earth is the source of life, not a resource. End quote. I think this genuine statement can provoke our renewed perception of an attitude towards the Earth. Then I thought, wait a minute, this could be applied to our attitudes towards Holy Communion, towards the body of Christ. Before we tackle the theme of the body of Christ per se, let us look at the image of food, our daily nourishment. I like food, of course, cooking and eating and even reading and watching something about food. Food fascinates me deeply. My memories of my whereabouts were always associated with what I cooked and ate. My first successful dish, kind of dish, was a crepe with lemon, sugar, and butter. A very simple dish that I made for my family. I was perhaps a fifth, no, maybe sixth grader then. 
I remember how my family appreciated and enjoyed eating my humble meal. Even now, my father wants me to make it for him. So it does not need to be gorgeous and luxurious fine dining for us to remember it, but a simple and heartfelt bite can have a huge impact. I suppose that all of you have a similar experience of memorable sharing, memorable meals, at least one or two times. Now I can imagine that there are bubble marks around here, you know, in your imagination. Food is the center of everything, if you think about it. It's there for us. Of course, somebody must prepare to nourish us and to facilitate our bonding. Okay, sign off here for the food talk. But food could be an apt metaphor for the body of Christ. Let's get down to the main topic, the body of Christ. First, let us recall the earnest statement that Mother Earth is the source of life, not a resource. What are the differences between source and resources? Source stands for the point of origin. Thus, it is a subject and we come close, we come close to and gravitate towards the source as we feel drawn by its generative substance or force. Resource refers rather to something that can be used to function effectively. Here I pose a question. How do we treat Holy Communion? In other words, is Holy Communion for us source or resource? It can be a source of our faith and a resource of our Christian life. Let us take a closer look. The source is consistent and generative. It refers to life. It is sturdy, sacred, and natural. It is a gift, an endowment from God, the Creator. Its value does not depend on its serving our convenience like the value of resources. Thus, we love, venerate, and partake with reverence. That's why the Lord commands us, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Christ's consistent and tenacious presence in the form of the consecrated bread manifests his life and love, to which we gravitate and of which partake. Holy Communion is a source and force that drive us to move forward in the footsteps of Jesus as God's beloved. But it is not a convenient resource that can make us function effectively as Christian. I would say that the body of Christ is source and substance, first and foremost, but not limited in style because style varies and diversifies due to tastes, but the source sustains and enlivens us, helping us to grow consistently. But what about the aspect of resource in the communion? The characteristics of nourishment does have some significance too, if you think about it not much about style and convenience, rather it represents other significant aspects. Sharing 
and bonding. Food is not just about physical nourishment, but also nurtures heartfelt memories and essential bonding. Food brings people together and connects. We may not receive Holy Communion as frequently as before, but we remember how we have felt and pray together with your friends when we have received the body of Christ. In this time of profound hunger and craving for communion, you are invited to remember those moments of sharing and bonding in your own experience of receiving communion. For me, right after taking the communion is an essential sacred time to reflect on the source of life, which I've just received. I give thanks to the Lord, and I pray for the people with whom I am concerned and their intentions. This is my devotion to confirming my bond with Jesus and my friends. Thus, I believe that my partaking of the body of Christ sustains my life, my faith, and the lives of the others as well. The communion is our source, and it represents and sustains our sharing and abundance in the community of believers. In Him, we become one. The body, in Christ, body of Christ is the food eternal and wholesome. The food, the body of Christ, builds community of believers. It is the food that we gravitate towards and of which we love to partake. It may need some more time before you will have the opportunity to participate again in his banquet, but you can renew your desire and craving for communion with the Lord and with your brothers and sisters in Christ through your memories and prayers. Just remember how your partaking of the communion did bring you happiness and gratitude. How did it transform your life into a life of believer? The body of Christ brings us together. Let us offer our longing as a sacrifice for those who suffer and feel lost in this pandemic and in dealing with the various pains in today's unsettled, uncertain world. Lastly, in today's first reading, Moses said, Remember how God has directed all your journey in the desert. Do not forget the Lord who guided you through the vast and terrible desert and fed you in the desert with manna. For us, people of God, this year's Lent and Easter time were just like desert where we felt vulnerable, hungry, and thirsty. It is a communal experience of longing for the communion. Though it is not easy, let us not forget and cherish this communal experience of vulnerability, hunger, thirst, and partaking. Remember our Lord has been always faithful when we fell into unfaithful. The Lord, our source, is consistent even though we are inconsistent. May the body of Christ be our source of life and resource to share with others. Amen. Amen.
So now let us recite our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As one and united the Eucharistic community, let us bring our prayers to the Lord and ask him to sustain whoever hungers for him, we pray. Stay with us, O Lord. Stay with us, O Lord. That the living church, body of Christ, may serve you in this most holy sacrament of the altar with ever deeper reverence and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Stay with us, O Lord. That the Lord may be strength and companion in life for those who take part in the Eucharist, and especially those who receive the First Communion on this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Stay, Stay with, with us, O Lord. Lord. That the sacrament of the Eucharist may inspire people to serve Christ in sharing with our other brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Stay, Stay with, with us, us, O Lord. That those who do not yet share in the body of Christ may be inspired and attracted by Jesus through His loving and kind hearted presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Stay, Stay with, with us, us O Lord. Lord. That the needy, the sick, and the forgotten, especially those who are infected with COVID-19, that they may find strength and comfort in Jesus, eternally living. Let us pray to the Lord. Stay, Stay with, with us, us O Lord. Lord. We pray for the frontliners, those working in healthcare fields, the doctors, nurses, attendants, and staff, who are working longer hours with more risk of contracting the coronavirus themselves, that the Holy Spirit may strengthen them, sustain, and protect them as they work with patients. Let us pray to the Lord. Stay, Stay with, with us, O Lord. Lord. We pray for all the people who continue to work each day so that people are able to eat, for the grocery store workers, delivery drivers, and the backstage people who contribute much to our daily living Bless and protect them as they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Stay, Stay with, with us, us O Lord. Lord. We pray for all the people who have died, especially due to pandemic, that they may ascend to glory with Jesus Christ, our High Priest and Intercessor. Let us pray to the Lord. Stay, Stay with, with us, us O Lord. Lord. That our community may truly form a united body of Christ as we share in the living bread and blood of our Lord Jesus with reverent devotion. Let us pray to the Lord. Stay, Stay with, with us, us, O Lord. God our Father, accept our humble prayers. We offer you in union with the perfect prayer of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Lord Jesus Christ, as we gather around your table to share in your divinity, may the bread and wine we present here bring unity and peace to your church forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper with His Apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, He offered Himself to you as the unblemished Lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures, heaven and earth, sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly, willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of, it, of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith
Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Tarsisius Isao Kikuchi, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. God is a Father who gives everlasting food to His people. Let us ask Him for the true and living bread that gives life to the world. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Those who are attending the Mass online are now invited to recite the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive your sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen
Lord, we thank you for having fed us with your body and blood, a real food and drink for our souls. Now we pray, grant that by celebrating the Holy Eucharist, we may delight for all eternity in the share in your divine life, foreshadowed in the present age, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us recite Oratio Imperata for the protection against COVID-19. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask for your protection against COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people to us to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical expert that they may minister to the sick with confidence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our tears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly up to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities. 
but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray, pray for us. Saint Ignatius, pray, pray for us. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank you for celebrating the rookies with us. May you have a great day ahead. God bless us all.